Hi, I'm Professor Alan Brill of Seton Hall University. I have the Cooperman Ross Endowed Chair in, in honor of Sister Rose Theoring at the University. Okay, the question for the bloggers is can interfaith work be done outside of tradition, outside of traditional texts? My approach is to treat it within traditional texts because I found that went much further. There was a great deal of interfaith um, that was done in the 1970s, that was done from a universal perspective. We're all mystical, we're all one, but now I'm bringing it back to the traditions and most people I meet also bring it back to the traditions. Can one do anything from the universal or must it only be done from the traditional? My book is called Judaism and Other Religions and the book is trying to do a theology of other religions. It's not specifically a dialogue with another religion, but it's a clearly what does Judaism say about other religions. In the 1960s, we went very quickly from speaking about exclusivism to saying, okay, we are now going to be open, tolerant, and be pluralistic. But along the way, we never made that moment to say, what do we say about other religions? To formulate the baseline. We said, yes, we know there are these things out there, but no one ever collected it. So I collected the texts, uh, biblical, rabbinic, medieval, early modern, that deal with the categories of exclusivism, inclusivism, pluralism, and a Jewish category that doesn't really exist in the Christian side, universalism and presented them. I presented the where the theological topics are different from the legal categories and presented where the traditional texts even talk about a um, a theory of religion as a whole. So that's a book is presenting text from a Jewish point of view. Uh, the book because of the editors at Palgrave they, uh, Macmillan, they've been incredibly supportive. They actually broke this into two volumes. So later this year There'll be a second volume coming out called Judaism and World Religions that'll specifically deal with Judaism on Christianity, Judaism on Islam, Judaism on Hinduism and Buddhism. I mean, the last part is one of the more surprising ones. People don't usually think of the Jewish Hindu encounters or Jewish Buddhist encounters in past times. The problem with only addressing it from a humanistic perspective or only a tolerant pluralistic perspective um, has limits both on the local level and on the international level. For example, I mean, with the new administration, I actually met imams from Iraq who were brought here to try to learn how to create religious liberty and religious space in their home countries. Um, if they're going to go back and be imams in the middle of... Um, Sunni, Shiite, Kurdish fighting to come back and to say that they're going to take some American pluralistic, that it's all wonderful and it's all just a personal expression, is not really teaching them anything. There's nothing, it's not teaching them how to be a Sunni um, that we can respect others or what it means to sit that Jews and Catholics can sit down as strong in their faith. So on an international level, it just really wasn't where the world was at. Um, on, the, on the more theoretical level, tolerance doesn't actually require you to know anything about another religion, because you can just say we're all tolerant and that's the end of it. Tolerance says I can tolerate a mistaken position. There is, an, there is actually a lot less respect there uh, that's going on. Um, General humanistic tolerance treats the other as secular. You're not coming together and dealing with religious issues. You're coming together that already says you could bracket out a secular side. And most of the world's problems post 9-11, when re religion has reasserted itself all over the globe, uh, including in America, as a vital force, that general secular side doesn't work. Um... And there's one that Chief Rabbi Jonathan Sachs gives, is that the tolerant position does not actually encourage diversity or difference. It actually is a hidden sense, why can't we all be the same pluralists? The advice is know your own tradition well, 
You've actually got to come, come to come with your own sense of your own models, your own what your tradition says about other religions, what your what your faith can bring, and a commitment to your own faith, not to show up as a general universalist, but to show up having something to say. And with that, that since we are at a period uh, where there's ever new openings in interfaith, is to go out of your comfort zone is to show, to go where you are less comfortable in places that haven't been gone, that's where the contribution is going to be. Not the interfaith that may go on at a, at a college campus, because a lot of that has been quite comfortable at this point, but could go to places you don't expect to go.